Hey everyone, it's Ditto from Reef to Reef. Today, we are going to go through how to connect your Tons Powerhead to your Proflux controller via the 1 through 10 volt port. So let's get started. First, we need to look at the back of the Proflux controller to see the 1 through 10 volt ports. Both the Proflux 4E, which is the controller I'm showing today, and the Proflux 4 controller have three 1 through 10 volt ports, which allow you to connect up to six devices. So on the back of the unit, you're going to notice three yellow ports. Each of these ports can control two devices and are labeled L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5, L6. Now that we know where we're going to connect the TONS power heads to the Proflux controller, how do we determine if the TONS power heads have a 1 through 10 volt port connection? You can go looking through the manual you can also look at the manufacturer's website, or you can look at the controller itself and see if the device has a one through 10 volt connection. When looking at the controller itself that connects to the power head, look at the top of the controller and you will see a connection specific to the one through 10 volt port. Here's a very good example. Here's a, a tons power head uh, control unit. On the top of the unit right here is where you would be connecting in the 1 through 10 volt port connection. You will notice also on the front of the unit the ability to do external control. Sometimes power heads that have the 1 through 10 volt port connections are the 6105, the 6095, and the 6055. We need some cables to connect the tons power heads to the Proflux 4 controller. The GHL TONS Proflux connection cables come in two variations. A TONS 1 cable, which looks like this, and it's labeled a T1 cable, is used for the L1, L3, and L5 ports. And a TONS 2 cable, which is right here, which is labeled T2, is used for connecting to the L2, L4, and L6. The next question is, wait, how do you plug into the same one through 10 volt ports if you have two cables? GHL sells a YL2-1 cable, shown here. What this cable allows you to do is plug two one through 10 volt devices into one L port on the back of the GHL Proflux controllers. Now that we have all the cables, the controllers, and the power heads, let's hook this up. Here's what it looks like when it's hooked up to the controller. Let's start with the back of the unit. On the back of the unit, you're gonna notice that the YL21 cable is plugged into the L1 and L2 port. Also, at the end where the splitter is, we have a TONS, GHL TONS T2 cable and a TONS T1 cable, which then in turn plug into the power head controllers themselves. Now that we have it all connected to the controller, it's time to program the pumps to work with the controller. From your Android or iPhone device, click on the GHL Connect icon. Once your device is loaded, choose your Proflux controller. These tons power heads are being installed on my Proflux 4E Essentials, which is on my frag tank. Once the dashboard from the controller comes up, click on the small hamburger icon in the upper left hand corner of the screen. We must first assign the interface options to the 1 through 10 volt ports. Therefore, choose the 1 through 10 volt dash interface menu option. This menu option displays all the 1 through 10 volt interfaces. By default, your 1 through 10 volt interfaces are assigned to illumination channels as shown here. Clicking on Interface 1 will open up the 1 through 10 volt Interface 1 options. Clicking on the functions allow you to see what functions can be used to control your 1 through 10 volt interface. You could use illumination channels and program set points to control your pumps by setting the brightness level higher and lower, causing a gear type effect, understanding you only have 24 set points. Constant flow allows you to have a constant flow or voltage assigned to the port in your power head. You could select always off, which turns the port completely off. You can also control them based on using sensor probes, but we are going to be choosing stream pumps. We want to be able to program them via stream groups, which also are impacted by feed, night mode, and thunderstorms. Not all tons motors operate utilizing the entire one through 10 volt output settings. 
you can control also the minimum and maximum output that you want to apply to this pump. On older tons pumps, the lower voltage to turn the pump off was approximately 3 volts, and the upper voltage was approximately 8 volts. You can test the lower and upper limits of your pump by applying a constant flow option and adjusting the voltage starting at zero and slowly raising it to see when the pumps turn on. You can then determine the upper voltage when you notice the pumps are showing no more increase in power. You can also reach out to tons on their Facebook page, on GHL on their Facebook page, or even on Reef to Reef or even GHL support to ask other users on what voltage settings they're currently using for their tons pumps. For me, I have newer pumps and I will be defaulting mine to the default settings. Click the save button and save the settings to the one through 10 volt interfaces. Click the back button in the upper left hand corner and we're going to repeat the same settings on the one through 10 volt interface number two. I'm gonna click on the function and choose stream group and I'm going to click save. Click back now and choose the hamburger icon in the upper left hand corner. We now want to program our pumps in the stream group options. To do so, we need to choose the extra menu option. Once you choose the extra menu option, additional menu options become available. Choose stream groups. You will now be presented with four options, stream groups one through stream groups four. It is very important to note pumps can only be part of one stream group. Choose stream group one. From within this menu, you can change the mode of the stream group, the types of waves for the stream group, nocturnal effects of your stream group, and last, the assignment of the pumps for this stream group. Let's first assign pumps one and two to the stream group. Click on the assigned pumps. A new window will appear and choose pump one and pump two, and then click apply you will immediately notice a warning message stating that the save changes need to be applied before the pumps are assigned to the stream group. Go ahead and save the changes. Once you do this, you're going to notice that your pumps now have a minimum and max state and along with a small gear next to each pump. Click the small gear on pump number one. Here is where you're going to set the minimum and max percentages of your pump, the percentage that you wish your pumps to run at night, and what percentage you wish to have your pumps to run during a thunderstorm. Another great option is if your pumps are totally powered down during activity, you can enable this button by sliding it over. The last option is the behavior of pumps during feed pause, or what I like to call feed mode. By default, the power heads are unaffected, but clicking this option provides you on what options to set as a minimum percentage of your power heads while the feed mode is pressed, or if you wish to have the power heads turn off completely during feed mode. When you choose either a percentage or off, you must then determine what feed modes are impacted by this menu option and choose those feed modes. Once you do that, you click apply and those settings are now saved. We are now gonna go back to gear number two and repeat the same setup options. Scrolling back up now, we're going to set the modes for the stream group. GHL has a great write-up on the modes, and I'm placing that write-up in a URL in the description of this YouTube video. Each mode is unique. For my frag tank, I'll be choosing sequence one, which is the first pump will turn on for a min-max duration, and then pump two will turn on for a min-max time, and then repeat. I'm going to choose a min-max duration of 30 minutes, and a maximum duration of 60 minutes. This means that my pumps will randomly be turned on between a time of 30 and 60 minutes. Next, we're going to set the wave pattern. By default, no wave is selected, meaning all pumps will remain at a constant base on the settings we set in the pump assignment. But maybe you would like a bit of a pattern or surge. Click on the wave mode and you have two options to select. Sine wave, which is a gentle acceleration and deacceleration of the pump, while right angles are erupt changes. For my frag tank, I'm going with the sine wave. Next, we need to select a minimum and maximum. My minimum wave duration is 30 seconds and my maximum is 60 seconds. 
This will create random waves that last between 30 and 60 seconds, each ramping up and down gently. But you might also want to create a constant wave, meaning that they have the same minimum and maximum duration. And to do this, you set the min and max to the same value. Last, you can also set a random wave reduction. The bigger the value, the more different the sine wave crest becomes. At 0%, each wave reaches its peak at the same rate interval in time. But at 100%, the waves begin to fluctuate between the minimum and maximum. The last option is, do you want your power heads to run lower at night? Enabling the nocturnal option and selecting the times will have your pumps reduce in power based on the settings of the pump assignment. I'm enabling this option and will be choosing 9 p.m. start time and a 6 a.m. end time. When all done, you click save. Don't forget that you need to go back to your TONS controller and change the mode to external control now that the ProFlux controller is taking over control of your pumps. And there you have it. The steps to install a TONS 1 through 10 volt controllable power heads to your ProFlux controller. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or you can find me on Reef to Reef. This is Ditto, signing off.